Good evening. I'm Spot on Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and tonight we're going to talk about the latest Hurricane Dorian update. I'm going to go through um, general model tracks, the latest, as well as possible impacts to Hampton Roads cities in southeast Virginia. All right, so this is an image, another enhanced infrared image from earlier, actually early this evening of Hurricane Dorian. And you can just see that clear concentric eye, that clear eye with rapid uh, convective banding around the eye, um, in the eye wall where the strongest winds are occurring. And Dorian has basically become stationary this evening, the 2nd of September, um, in the vicinity of the Grand Bahama Island. And it has just, unfortunately, it has moved very slowly over the last 24 hours and now is stationary which is terrible, terrible news for the Bahamas, the Northern Bahamas, you know, just getting the fierceness of this storm. And, and it has weakened over, over the past um, 24 hours. And we're gonna go and get right into it right now, but a very concentric looking, very symmetrical, circular shaped hurricane. Latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center as of 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, today, the 2nd of September, 2019. Position 26.8 North. 78.4 degrees west longitude, about 25 miles northeast of Freeport, Grand Bahama Island. It's about 105 miles east of West Palm Beach, Florida, with maximum sustained winds at 145 miles per hour. So if you recall from last night's video, Dorian had winds up around 185 miles per hour sustained. So it has weakened by, it has, well, it's decreased in wind speed and the central pressure has risen over the last 24 hours. Present movement, again, stationary, just sitting and spinning. Uh, minimum central pressure at 940 millibars or 27.76 inches of mercury. So this is the latest information as of 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the 2nd of September, 2019 from the National Hurricane Center. Now we're gonna move right on in into the tracks. Uh, GFS versus a European model. And we're now starting to get into that time period. You know, we're looking at a 96 hour window now, a four day window um, of possible impacts in the Hampton Road cities in Southeast Virginia, as well as Northeast North Carolina. Um, so we're getting in that area where models generally lock on to a solution for the most part, and there's not very significant deviations in those model outputs. But, you know, again, this is very subject to change. We still cannot say for sure this is the total path that Dorian is going to take. All right, so the GFS model, and this was as of the midday update on 2 September 2019, the model run. I've looked at the 18 Zulu um, evening model run as well. It's very, very similar. Not much in the way of deviation or change. The image on the left, the graphic on the left there shows... Um, 48 hours from now, basically on Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Wednesday, September 4th. And this shows Hurricane Dorian just approaching east of the Jacksonville, Florida area at 950 millibar central pressure. Image on the right, we move it forward now to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening, the 4th of September, 2019. And Dorian has started to really make a move north. You're starting to see more of a northward motion or direction of motion. 952 millibar low, still a fairly intense storm at this point. Moving along now to Thursday, September 5th, the morning of about 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the left-hand image. Um, Dorian continues to track up and along the southeast coastline, not making landfall, but pretty much paralleling the southeast coast at 958 millibar central pressure. And on the right-hand image, we're moving ahead now to 2 p.m., 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Thursday, September 5th, 2019. Central pressure has now risen, risen to 962 millibars, but Dorian is still sitting just off the North Carolina, South Carolina border, still out over the water, basically paralleling the geography of the coastline. And at this point on Thursday afternoon, we still we should start seeing some of the impacts of Dorian in the Hampton Road cities in Southeast Virginia, as well as Northeast North Carolina, with a lot of moisture that's starting to wrap on the north side of the storm, along with 
uh, a, a lot of onshore water flow. So we're gonna have to keep a close eye on those impacts. We should start seeing we should start seeing some rain though by um, Thursday afternoon. Moving ahead now to Thursday evening. Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, image on the left shows Dorian now at a, as a 965 millibar low. So it continues to, the central pressure continues to rise within Dorian. Uh, the center of the storm is basically right along the North Carolina coastline at this point with a lot of rain, heavy rain, a lot of wind wrapping around Dorian into Hampton Road cities into Southeast Virginia. And then the image on the right shows a little bit later on in the evening overnight on Thursday night at about 2 a.m. Friday morning, 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Dorian is now uh, at 969 millibar low, beginning to undergo, undergo extra tropical transition. A lot of wind, a lot of heavy rain wrapping around Dorian at this point overnight on Thursday night. Moving ahead now, image on the left, Friday morning GFS, um, 8 a.m., 971 millibar low, Dorian, uh, sitting just situated um, in the vicinity of, well, just to the east of the Outer Banks at this point, with a lot of north-northeast winds, very tight pressure gradient, very strong wind flow, and a very heavy rain continuing, wrapping around the center of Dorian. Image on the right takes us ahead now to Friday afternoon, about 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and Dorian is now starting to push away from the coastline further out to sea, uh, very heavy rain wrapping around its northwest side. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the importance of the heavy rain and the northwest side of the storm here in a little bit. Now let's turn to the European model track and see if there's any differences. This is the midday run from the European. Today's run on 2 September 2019. Image on the left, um, this is the uh, Wednesday morning, the 4th of September 2019 at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Doreen is situated uh, pretty much paralleling the Florida coast. It's coming up just east of Jacksonville, Florida. Image on the right shows Dorian starting to make uh, the turn north. Now just situated off Savannah, Georgia. There on the image on the right by Wednesday evening, about 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Here we go. We'll just keep going through. 60 hours out on the left-hand image, 60 hours from now. Um, on Wednesday evening, you see Dorian situated off Savannah, image on the right, showing um, continuation into Thursday morning, and you're seeing the track of Dorian is just offshore of South Carolina by that point. Moving ahead, left-hand image, Dorian continues to track up the coast and runs parallel, but not does not make landfall on the European, remaining parallel to the geography of that southeast coastline. There'll still be a lot of wind and a lot of rain wrapping around Orion. Um, if you look at the far right-hand image there, I'm showing you Dorian's position as of Friday morning, the 6th of September at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, there's going to be a lot of wind wrapping around. So the big difference right now, the tracks are very similar between GFS and the European model. It appears that GFS is a little bit quicker a little bit quicker than the European model right now and that would be the biggest difference as far as the timing of impacts. Here is a look at the GFS versus the European ensemble tracks. Um, the image on the left is the GFS ensemble forecast system, Jeff's. Image on the right is a European um, ensemble system. So if you look at the tracks and they're very similar both, both the GFS ensembles and the European ensembles. Uh, you see the tightly clustered lines, especially on the left on the GFS ensemble, how tightly clustered the lines are. So we have a fairly high confidence on the GFS model that that's going to be the track of Dorian. As Dorian moves north and gains latitude, the wind field will expand. The um, tropical storm force winds will get further out from the center and that in that process of extra tropical transition we can expect to see heavier rain to the left of the storm track to the northwest side of that surface low or during the center of that surface low. So very similar between the European and the GFS models this evening. Gets a little bit more spread out on the image on the right in the European um, ensemble as you go uh, north of 40 degrees north latitude, um, you know, as far as where it's going to go from 40 north as it continues to move northeastward out over the open waters of the North Atlantic. Here's all model tracks 
as of 18Z, the 18Z ATCF guidance tonight on Dorian. Um, again, the more tightly clustered the lines, the color lines, these are all represent different models. And the more tightly clustered these lines, the higher the probability of this occurring, the track occurring. And so you can see very tightly clustered lines there off the southeast U.S. coast on up just off of the outer banks and then outward away from the mid-atlantic coast out to sea here's the official forecast track from the national hurricane center on hurricane dorian as of 5 p.m eastern daylight time this is an advisory number 38 um, with the position again max sustained winds at 145 miles per hour where you see that 5 p.m monday um, M indicates, again, that's a major hurricane status, major hurricane status being greater than 110 mile per hour winds. And you notice now we have uh, the Hurricane Center has issued a hurricane watch that extends uh, over coastal Georgia up through coastal, a good portion of coastal South Carolina. Um, you see the cone as well, how the hurricane transits and moves generally to the northeast. Now, you see from 5 p.m., Today on Monday, the 2nd of September, to 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 4th of September, you notice there's just not very quick movement of Dorian uh, between those two points. So between now and uh, basically the next 48 hours through Wednesday afternoon, Dorian is just going to parallel the Florida coast. And then you start seeing some greater spacing between these points. Uh, for example, off the South Carolina coast at 2 p.m. Thursday as a hurricane, and even off the coast of the Mid-Atlantic at 2 p.m. on Friday, it's still a hurricane. Uh, but it is making an extratropical transition at this point. And again, uh, I'll break that down here in a minute, the difference between tropical and extratropical, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But this, just keep in mind, Hampton Road cities, eastern North Carolina, we do remain in that cone of uncertainty. And again, just like you probably have already heard, do not focus on the um, exact track of the storm. Because, again, as it gets up off the mid-Atlantic, the wind field will expand as it gains latitude. The energy will be dispersed over a larger area away from the central core of the storm. And that's usually what happens during the transition. So these winds, the tropical storm force winds, can extend well outward 150 to even 200 miles. Dorian is already showing signs today of expanding and growing in size. So it's just something to keep in mind. Wind speed probabilities from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, image on the left shows tropical storm force wind speed probabilities all the way out through 2 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, the 7th of September. The purple shading indicating greater than 90% probability out over the open waters just the east of Florida, off the open waters just to the east of Georgia, and off the waters of South Carolina. There's a 90 to 100% probability of tropical storm force winds. Tropical storm force winds being 39 to 73 miles per hour. And then the maroon shading indicates 70 to 80 percent or 80 to 90 percent. And then that red shading indicates 70 to 80 percent probability. Right now, eastern North Carolina ranges um, generally from 60 percent and higher. Um, southeast Virginia, including the cities of Virginia Beach, uh, that is currently in a 30 to 40 percent probability of experiencing tropical storm force winds. But again, this is all going to be dependent on how big that wind field expands as Dorian moves northeast uh, out along the southeast and mid-Atlantic coasts. Uh, image on the right shows the total projected rainfall, the five-day rainfall forecast in inches. You'll see the scale there at the bottom right of that image. Um, the orangish colors are indicating 6 to 10 inches expanding from eastern North Carolina, the Outer Banks, down to Wilmington, down along the South Carolina coastline right near Charleston. The uh, yellow color indicates four to six inches and the darker green two to four inches. So for Southeast Virginia, we're looking at anywhere from four to six inches of rain um, and it could be locally higher amounts. Now, one thing I want to point out is uh, as the uh, Dorian changes from a tropical to extra tropical storm, the um, heaviest rain generally tends to be to the Northwest of the low pressure center. So that orange shading there over eastern North Carolina could easily move a little bit further to the northwest, dependent on the track of Dorian, but that could, that could slide right into the Hampton Road cities, and we could be looking at 6 to 10 inches of rain. You know, we got something similar to that back in 2016 when Hurricane Matthew interacted on a similar path with a stationary frontal boundary.
So that's something to keep a close eye on is rainfall totals. The wind forecast. Now this is again sustained wind speeds. These are not gusts. These are just straight up wind speeds that blow consistently across the Earth's surface. Image on the left shows Friday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, we're seeing strong northeasterly winds blowing between 30 and 35 miles per hour at this point. Image on the right, we're moving ahead now to 11 a.m. late morning on Friday the 6th of September 2019. Now the winds are starting to increase from the northeast, 40 to 45 miles per hour is possible by Friday, Friday late morning. Uh, Dorian is generally off to the lower right of the image on the right, okay, the center of Dorian. So winds are going to be brisk out of the northeast. That could possibly lead to some moderate to major tidal flooding with such strong northeasterly winds. So that's something we got to keep an eye on. We'll be watching the high tidal cycles. I didn't put that in tonight's video, but that's something you always factor in. The phase of the moon as well as the tidal cycles when your high and low tides are um, with this strong northeasterly wind like this. Here's the wind gust forecasts. Uh, image on the left shows Friday morning. And I basically took snapshots from the European model on the strongest wind periods. So Friday morning, about 8 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time through midday, that looks to be the strongest punch of winds at this point based on the timing of Dorian. The wind gusts, image on the left, shows Friday morning. Gusty winds in excess of 50 miles per hour over the Hampton Road cities, 50 to 55. Image on the right shows late Friday morning, the wind gusts could be as high as 65 miles per hour. So it's something we've got to keep an eye on because this could result in some sort of damage. Rainfall totals. Um, not much change. Image on the left is the European. Image on the right is the GFS. Generally, what we're looking at is four to six inches in the area. But if you look at the image on the left with the European model, there's a seven, just six to seven inches over northeast North Carolina. Again, as Dorian grows in size, that rain shield could expand a little bit further to the northwest. So we got to keep an eye on that. In general, though, right now we're looking at four to six inches of locally higher amounts in the Hampton Road cities. Uh, Thursday night into Friday, Friday morning. And here is a very similar situation to my video last night. And this is a great concern that I have. Again, stationary frontal boundary approaching the, you know, frontal boundary approaches the mid-Atlantic and then it stalls out. And uh, image on the right shows Friday morning at 8 a.m. And you basically have Dorian right offshore and right offshore of uh, Cape Hatteras. Dorian sits on Friday morning and you got the stationary frontal boundary and all that tropical moisture being lifted over the, in the vicinity of the frontal boundary, um, which could really result in some very heavy rains across southeast Virginia and northeast North Carolina. So this is something really, again, to keep a close eye on. And I wanted to show you an image uh, tonight, tropical versus extratropical cyclone. The image on the left shows tropical cyclone. Um, the shape is, you see the black style lines, is more circular or symmetrical. Um, very right below that hurricane symbol on the left, uh, you'll see that there is a warmer pocket of air aloft. It's a warm core system, so the warmest temperatures are towards the center of the circulation. In addition, you usually have high pressure aloft over this tropical cyclone. Um, and then as we look at the extratropical cyclone image on the right, that is associated with frontal systems, air mass changes, um, you have counterclockwise circulation, you different have different conveyor belts involved. And then below that, the extratropical cyclone, you have cold air aloft, cold core system, or coldest air is at the center in an extratropical cyclone. And you also have lower pressure aloft above the storm. So there's a big difference here if you look at it, you know, warm pockets versus cold pockets at the center for one. And then high pressure uh, is a nice ventilation exhaust system over the top of a warm core tropical cyclone, whereas uh, the extra tropical cyclone supported by the jet stream typically, as well as upper level troughs, mid and upper level troughs aloft and low pressure system over the top. All right, so this is Hurricane Dorian impacts forecast for Hampton Road cities. Um, this is based on the 12Z European model run on the 2nd of September, 2019 today. This forecast is subject to change based on future model runs. Um, again, things are locking into place pretty good here on tracks. 
Uh, I will say that you know there's not much difference between these models. Okay, um, there's tighter clustering in the in in the in the models tonight. Um, so confidence is growing that this is a distinct possibility. Now again, the track could shift. You know, the slightest shift can mean a big difference in what kind of weather we get here in the Hampton Road cities. Generally, wind forecast. Here we go. This is what I'm expecting right now. Uh, east northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts to 25 miles per hour by 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time Thursday afternoon. Uh, those winds will increase east northeasterly right off the water at 15 to 25 miles per hour with gusts to 35 miles per hour by 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time around dinner time Thursday. Increasing northeasterly. So you notice how they're going east northeast. Then they're going to switch a little bit, back a little bit to the northeast at 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts of 45 miles per hour by 2 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time Friday morning. So as we head through the overnight hours, you'll notice you'll probably be sleeping and you'll hear those trees blowing really quick. you hear the wind maybe against your windows. Um, you want to make sure bring in any loose lawn furniture or anything lawn furniture-wise or anything that can blow around outside prior to going to sleep on Thursday evening. You don't want to wait uh, you don't want to get woke up with something, you know, lawn furniture flying into your house or anything like that. Now, notice the winds continue to increase overnight. Now, they increase northeast 30 to 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 55 miles per hour by 8 a.m. on Friday morning. Further increasing northeasterly 35 to 45 miles per hour. Now, we're talking about gusts up to 65 miles per hour by 11 a.m. on Friday morning. Eventually, as Dorian begins to pull away, the winds will shift more to the north-northwest, which will be good news as far as tidal flooding possibilities. As soon as we get more of an offshore or a northerly wind, north-northwest wind component, that alleviates our onshore piling of water and tidal flooding issues. Um, so once those winds shift north-northwest, 35 to 45 miles per hour, we still have gusts of 60, by 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday afternoon. But those winds will continually shift, still be really, really windy on Friday afternoon, northwest 30 to 40 with gusts of 55 miles per hour by 5 p.m. Friday evening. Eventually those winds come down decreasing northwest 20 to 30 with gusts of 35 by 8 p.m. Friday evening. So once we get to Friday evening, we're looking at basically, you know, where the winds start ramping up on uh, Thursday afternoon into the evening continually increase overnight Thursday night and some very potent gusts, especially you get closer to the beach and especially down towards Outer Banks, the winds are going to be even gustier, stronger, uh, but it's going to be uh, very windy. The strongest winds we're expecting uh, overnight Thursday night into Friday morning and then we do expect Dorian to pull away and the skies to begin to um, clear out for Friday afternoon and evening, but those winds with a stronger pressure gradient before that gradient relaxes, those winds are still going to be blowing strong from the northwest. The one bright um, silver lining in this is a northwesterly wind is going to really, really drop the uh, relative humidity, the surface dew points. It's going to feel really nice. And we got some great weather on the other side of this on uh, Saturday and Sunday coming up, the first full weekend of September. So total rainfall, what we're looking at right now with the impacts from Dorian, four to six inches with locally higher amounts. Now we cannot rule out higher amounts to eight inches. It's gonna be dependent on Dorian's track and the storm's interaction with the stalled frontal boundary as I mentioned. All right, so as this as the tropical moisture interacts with the stalled frontal boundary, uh, this could shift. The image on the left, you know, we're looking at six to eight inches down over Northeast North Carolina. That could shift and pivot to the Northwest depending on how close Dorian gets and the dynamics involved with this stalled frontal boundary, the upper level dynamics. Um, so we'll have to keep a close eye on that. And note the heaviest rain and the highest winds will occur over Northeast North Carolina and Virginia Beach, closer to the ocean, closer to the coastline. My biggest concerns right now, my biggest concerns right now are for widespread power outages because of the strong wind gusts you know, it doesn't take a lot in the Hampton Road cities to get those power outages. So I'm, I'm more concerned about power outages with the gusty winds. Uh, and I'm also concerned about flooding due to heavy rain. And then in certain spots, you get rising water levels at high tidal cycles. 
Um, the good news is, is if the storm is further offshore, then we will be limited on the total amount of hours that we'll see the very strong winds, uh, very strong northeasterly winds and onshore flow. Uh, further the storm drifts or, or tracks offshore, the less amount of time we have to deal with these type of things. So just something to keep an eye on. I'm also concerned about tree branches and smaller trees um, snapping as well as uh, the wind damaging shingles and roofing um, some of the weaker building, weaker building structures in the area. So this is my biggest concerns right now is for power outages and flooding rains um, as well as the rising water levels in the flood prone areas associated with strong northeasterly winds, similar to a nor'easter during the fall and winter where we get strong northeasterly winds in the area where we get flooding over some of the roads. So just remember if you're ever driving and you can't see the bottom, you can't see the road anymore, it's just not a good idea. The National Weather Service says turn around, don't drown. It's a great motto to go by. You don't want to risk it. If you can't see the road and it's underwater, you just don't want to put yourself in a bad position. All right, that wraps things up tonight. Spot on weather. This is my latest update at Hurricane Dory, Dorian and possible impacts on Hampton Roads weather. Uh, again, there, there is some time for this thing to, to shift its track. And if it shifts further to the southeast offshore, uh, expect this wind forecast, these wind speeds to come down. Expect the rainfall to come down. Expect the impacts to be much less. Um, if it shifts just slightly left or remains on its current trajectory, this is what I'm expecting. Uh, for the forecast. So hopefully this helps in your planning purposes. Um, you know, not sure how uh, the school systems around the area, and we're back in school tomorrow in the area, not sure how those school systems are going to, um, if they're going to be in session on Friday or not. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if, you know, the schools are actually closed for just maybe um, late Thursday, early dismissal and Friday. So it's a possibility with this kind of situation. Um, and, and again, with Hurricane Matthew back in October 2016, we had extreme flooding and some wind damage in the area. So um, just something to keep an eye on. That's it for Spot on Weather. Um, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I do updates regularly uh, for the latest information regarding Dorian. Have a great evening, everybody. Take care, be safe out there. And um, now is the time to kind of just start having a plan in place just in case the storm tracks a little closer. The impacts can be much greater. Um, and this is strong, strong, these are strong wind gusts. So, all right, that wraps it up. Have a great evening, everybody. Take care. Stay safe.